Hello and welcome to Virtual Investor Conferences. My name is Eric May, and on behalf of OTC Markets, we are very pleased you have joined us for our next live presentation from GenFlow Biosciences, a biotech company focused on developing gene therapies that target the aging process. Please note, you can submit questions in the question box to the left of the slides. You can also view the company's availability for one-on-one -on -one meetings through the Schedule Platforms tab found in the conference platform. At this point, I am very pleased to welcome Eric Glair, founder and CEO of GenFlow Biosciences PLC, which trades on the OCCQB venture market under the symbol G-E-N-F-F, -F, and also on the LSE under the symbol G-E-N-F. Welcome, Eric. Thank you, Eric, and thank you, the audience, for joining this presentation. I assume you won't be surprised uh, if I make forward-looking statement. I can skip that and start presenting the company. GenFlow is an aging company, an anti-aging company. What does that mean? And you may be surprised to see uh, a biotech company addressing aging. Aging is considered as a fatality, not as a disease. Uh, in fact, we should be very interested in aging, and this is why. First, uh, we had tremendous success in the last 100 years uh, with doubling the average lifespan. Compared to our ancestors 100 years ago, we have a second life. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we didn't do as such a good job when it came to how long we stay healthy. And unfortunately, uh, living longer, we spend our last year facing uh, cancer, neurodegenerative disease, diabetes, cardiovascular disease, all those age-related disease. Also, because now we're facing a situation in uh, the human race that has never been encountered. There's more people aged over 65 than people under five. This puts a tremendous pressure in terms of cost on the society, and it is not sustainable to continue like that, uh, waiting for people to have cancer, neurogenitive disease, diabetes, and cardiovascular. It is not acceptable because we now start to understand the biology that drives the aging process. Our company is particularly focusing on the role of a gene called sirtuin 6 uh, and more specifically on a sirtuin 6 variant that's found only in centenarian. As I mentioned that uh, the age and the longevity is not considered a disease, even if this will change, uh, we are now developing the, the, uh, this drug, this gene therapy, in two different indications. One is as close as possible to aging, is Werner syndrome. It's a rare disease. It's an accelerated aging disease, a progeria, and uh, it allows us to develop this drug under uh, uh, <clears throat> sorry, uh, under an orphan drug status. And we also developed this drug in a, liver, a disease of the liver, a non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, uh, NASH. We have uh, the chance to have uh, a, a very experienced team supporting this company. Uh, I will start with the scientific advisory board with uh, people like Dr. Eric Verdin with the head of the Buck Institute, the largest research center for aging in the world in Novato, California. Dr. Vera Gorbunova at uh, Rochester University, who plays a major role in the uh, scientific basis of this company, but also Dr. Matthew Hershey at Duke and Dr. Manlio Vinciguera. We had recently Dr. Frank uh, from Antwerp, who is a specialist on uh, NASH. Uh, the board of directors is composed of very seasoned people. Uh, I will mention the chairperson, Mrs. Tamara Joseph, who is based on, uh, in Boston. Uh, but we have also uh, Dr. Yassin Benbera from uh, the UK, uh, Dr. Charles, uh, Charles Fanoud Lauri, uh, who was number two at Biogen in his, in his uh, days and is also a vet that could have some importance later on when I will present the, uh, our pipeline. And Dr. Peter King uh, Lewis in the UK. Um, 
the company is uh, a UK company because we are listed uh, for now a year on London Stock Exchange under the symbol GENF. Uh, and we are introducing now uh, the company on OTCQB with the hope to have uh, uh, the right valuation recognized by the American market. Uh, we are a UK company, but we have subsidiaries in the US and in Belgium. Most of our R&D is conducted in Belgium. That gives us an uh, unfair advantage versus our American uh, competitors with very low operating costs. Access to CDMOs, a lot of CDMOs uh, in Belgium, small country, but uh, one of the largest density of CDMOs. And more importantly, we benefit from uh, support from the um, Belgian government. 70% of our R&D costs are supported by non-diluting grants. The science is based on uh, a variant of a gene called Sirtuin-6 that's only found in Centenarian. This Sirtuin-6 has been very well known in aging and as uh, uh, produce a lot of literature that uh, uh, demonstrate the impact of sirtuin 6 on the aging process. We're still in preclinical and we will be uh, in between 18 to 24 months in clinical trial. The company is based on first a belief that the, the genome drives our aging. Uh, if you have a dog, you know that you can give your dog all the rapamycin you want, all the metformin you want, you give it a lot of exercise. It will never live like us, 88 years. It's impossible. It will not have the same life expectancy. Um, and we're especially interested in the Sirtuin-6 among all the genes that regulate aging because of a paper published in 2019 in the newspaper Cell by Vera Gorbunova's team on the role of Sirtuin-6 with uh, rodent. She took um, 20, uh, 20 uh, different rodents and analyzed uh, their Sirtuin-6. These rodents are, um, have a different lifespan. A mouse, uh, on one hand, is living two to three years, three years in lab laboratory. And on the other hand, you have uh, the same family, rodent still, beaver or naked mole rat that lives 30 years, 30 to 35 years. To explain this difference in longevity, uh, the Veras Gorbunova's lab was able to demonstrate that this difference in, in longevity in health span was correlated with the quality of the sirtuin 6. The better your sirtuin 6, the longer was your lifespan. She plays with the, in this paper with different interpreting some sirtuin 6 and was able to modify, shorten or strengthen the lifespan of those rodents. In addition, one thing that was very appealing uh, the fact that the mutation, the difference in the gene uh, was were very small. And between uh, a Sirtuin-6 Sirtuin gene for a mouse or a Sirtuin-6 of a naked mole rat, you have only five amino acids difference. So something relatively small when you think that uh, uh, the gene Sirtuin-6 code for a protein that's roughly 350 amino acids. So a small modification was uh, able to produce a major impact on the lifespan. Sirtuin-6 was also very interesting because among the genes that uh, regulate aging, and we all have a lot of uh, genes that regulate age, Sirtuin-6 uh, is a relatively small gene, so it could be administered as a, a gene therapy, and was also uh, involved with a lot of the drivers of aging. When I say we understand the, the drivers of aging, the biology of aging, what we understand first, it's multifactorial, it's complex, a little bit like uh, uh, what we see in cancer. 
So what we were wanted to do is to, uh, knowing that there was this possibility to have a better C twin six, was is there a better C twin six in human? And we conducted with a Columbia University, Rochester University, and Albert Einstein College of Medicine a study among uh, Ashkenazian Jewish, uh, and we identified among the centenarian two different mutation, very small mutation, only one amino acid different in the protein coded. They were two different, but you can find this mutation, and that was only found in centenarian. We look at that, and we look that this um, centenarian C26 had better ability to repair DNA, and we understood that this uh, better uh, ability to repair DNA is linked with the uh, activated uh, ribosylation activity. And uh, this centenarian um, C26 was able to upregulate much more uh, PARP1, uh, um, which is a very important uh, step in the DNA repair. Associated to a gene, we needed to be able to deliver the gene in an ethical, cost-effective manner and safe manner. And uh, the uh, gene therapy has evolved so fast that we are now able to do that. It's ethical because we have now the possibility to deliver a gene without integrating the gene into the genome. So no risk of insertional oncogenesis. Uh, this is non-replicating, so it's a transient expression, can be stopped. And uh, now the possibility to have also reduced immunogenicity through AAVs. And we've developed our own genetically modified AAVs. And we further uh, improve that to uh, encapsulate this AAV in extravesicular exosome uh, capsid uh, and uh, to reduce the immunogenicity. So the fact that we can uh, produce those exo AV uh, blind those AV to the immune system that allow us to uh, deliver the therapy multiple times. You remember that uh, the AV uh, delivery is transient, and also has the advantage to improve the uh, uh, transduction versus free AVs. The intellectual property uh, reflect uh, these uh, two pillars of the company, uh, uh, exclusive license to the uh, Certwin 6 variant and a method of delivery through exo AAVs that we developed. Our product pipeline is not purely aging. We start with Werner syndrome. Uh, it's a progeria. It's a disease of accelerated aging. We'll be there within 18 to 24 months. We have our first interaction with the uh, agency uh, by the end of this month, the 26th. Uh, but we wanted through this Werner syndrome, be able to stay as close as possible to aging. This is very important for us because we know that at one point, aging will be considered as a disease. And when will this happen? You will see a major influx of pharma absent in the aging research, acquiring biotech companies. And we want to be as close as possible to, uh, to uh, aging. And therefore, uh, we developed this uh, first indication, uh, Werner syndrome. Werner syndrome is also interesting. It's a rare disease, so we can develop under orphan drug designation. But there's clusters of uh, patients. And one is in North Sardinia. So we already took contact and do some feasibility study in North Sardinia. And uh, we have a good chance to have a, a phase one slash two that's not too challenged in terms of enrollment of patients. The second indication uh, we developed the product is for NASH. And I will explain that. We have a third program in sarcopenia, mostly focused on the mitochondrial dysfunction 
you may know that uh, sarcopenia is a very important factor in longevity. As soon as you lose your muscle mass, uh, you lose social connection, uh, you lose uh, the ability to move, and you get a lot of complication. We have also a, a force program in dogs. Uh, I will explain that later. Let me focus on NASH. Uh, that's now the, the, our lead uh, indication. NASH is a huge indication. 35 million estimated. It's very difficult to uh, have a clear definition of the prevalence. 16 million in the US. The prevalence is increasing. Uh, it's now the leading cause of uh, liver transplantation. Uh, in the US, 160,000 people are waiting for a liver transplant. 16,000 of those people will die within the year. What's interesting with Sirtuin 6 in, uh, in uh, NASH is the fact that it addressed all the steps of NASH. Uh, NASH is an evolving disease. It starts with just uh, uh, steatosis. That means that just you have accumulation of fat in the liver. Uh, and then you have the NASH itself when you start to have inflammation and fibrosis. And then it evolved to cirrhosis and unfortunately to uh, uh, liver cancer, hepatocarcinoma. Uh, we have demonstrated an action on both the adipogenesis, both on the fibrosis, on the inflammation, and an anti tumor effect. Um, the rationale for NASH is, uh, uh, is uh, now very strong because we act on inflammation, fibrosis metabolic syndrome, steatosis, uh, so that, and the anti-tumor effect. Uh, I mentioned that we have also a program in VET, uh, that's a little bit of serendipity. Uh, we have to do talks, repeat our talks after the talks in mouse. We need to do a talks with dogs. Uh, we learned from partners in VET that they are very interested in uh, getting a life extension product for dogs. Uh, I naively thought it was the old people who don't want their dogs to die before them. In fact, it's the young people who use the dogs as a test uh, to see if they can have kids. Uh, so they get a dog, um, they do a good job, and they said, OK, we're fine. Uh, we can try to have kids now. Uh, unfortunately, the the dogs then die when the kids are six, seven, and it's a difficult um, situation to explain that you have to terminate the dogs. That's, that's, in fact, that's a huge demand for life extension for dogs, and it's mostly driven by these people. Uh, in terms of uh, uh, landscape, uh, in terms of anti-aging, most of the companies are American. Uh, what's very important to understand as an investor, it's Aging is like cancer. It's multifactorial, complex disease. That means that won't be one company that will take everything. There won't be one bullet, you know, silver bullet to fix aging. And uh, it's most likely that there will be multiple winners in, among the uh, biotech companies. Uh, what's interesting for us uh, is uh, I, I will advocate that uh, any kind of smart investor should uh, include uh, uh, Genflow in his portfolio of uh, few uh, longevity companies because we are very undervalued due to the low operating cost in, uh, in Europe, the fact that we are very well supported with grants supporting our R&D, and the fact that uh, the longevity concept is not mainstream in Europe. So we expect to have a, a, a much better, gain a much better valuation and more interest from retail also within the US. Uh, to wrap up this presentation, uh, why should you be interested in, in, uh, in, in GENF? Uh, first, uh, large opportunity with NASH, uh, increasing prevalence, no real um, treatment. Uh, we genuinely have a good shot at being the first uh, therapy for NASH. 
and uh, Nash uh, can be the door opener to an even broader anti-aging uh, indication. As soon as aging is considered as an indication, uh, we will see a major wave of uh, uh, acquisition from biopharma, a little bit like we've seen in IO when uh, immuno-oncology demonstrated efficacy. And uh, that uh, could happen within two, three years. There's already a lot of hints. Uh, WHO recognize uh, aging as a disease with an ICD-11. Uh, you can see now the um, TEM study conducted in the US with metformin only on aging endpoints. So it's, it will happen and there's a potential a huge upside for the early investors. Uh, we have uh, long life IP and growing mostly uh, two patents, one on the centenarian composition of matter and one method of delivery. And we filed this year three additional uh, provisional. Uh, we want to be uh, <clears throat> disruptive, uh, not only in the way we uh, deal with aging, but also in the gene delivery system. And our exo AV is quite innovative and could be in itself a, a, a platform product and an opportunity. Uh, we have multiple upcoming catalysts. Uh, we will have our first interaction uh, with the European Agency uh, in uh, June 26. We'll follow that with the FDA. Uh, the stock is, you hear that all the time, undervalued. Uh, and uh, as soon as aging is considered as a disease, like uh, as a risk factor, let's say, as high blood pressure or HDL, high HDL, uh, there will be a potential acquisition by pharmaceutical partner. That wraps up my, my presentation. Thank you very much for your uh, patience. And I will uh, answer the, the question. I see the first question as, what our position and need of cash over the next 12 months. Uh, yes, that's interesting. Uh, because we use a lot of grants, we still have 18 months of cash. Uh, and uh, we have been lucky to uh, have a long runway. Uh, and we were not obliged to take any shortcut or to cut any kind of uh, uh, R&D expenses. Um, we, we plan to raise some money by end of uh, 24. We'll start the fundraising by beginning 24, March 20, January, March 24. Uh, we are especially looking for institutional investors. Uh, we have mostly retail in the UK. One of the reasons to come to OTC is to get some institutional to our cap table. Uh, I see um, the same question. Uh, so no need for capital over the next 12 months. Uh, is Big Pharma investing in longevity? Uh, no, not yet. Uh, but uh, Altos Lab, for example, uh, has been funded on a work that has been uh, uh, supported by Genentech. And we see a more and more increase from, uh, from pharma. Uh, as soon as uh, aging will be considered as a risk factor, and that could be from the FDA, that could be from the MHRA in the UK, that's, it seems that Australia agency is also very keen to do that. Uh, the European agency also could come. It could come within two or three years. There will be a major acquisition of uh, pharma. Uh, for those who are interested in cancer, you've seen that uh, pharma was away from... Uh, from immuno-oncology as soon as there was uh, NK cells, uh, CAR T cells, uh, checkpoint inhibitors, they jumped and buy the, the biotech. Uh, mRNA with COVID, you can see Moderna, uh, BioNT, uh, same thing, uh, the big vaccine company, uh, Merck, they were not in RNA vaccine, now they all move on that. So we expect the same thing. Uh, Okay, big pharma, confirm still plan. Yes, I confirm that we can still plan. You ask if you can confirm that we still plan to meet five European Health Authority this month, the 26th. Um, 
uh, mentioned to treat uh, a potentially uh, Werner syndrome and Nash. Yes, and I had now uh, we have uh, we're discussing to uh, move a program with uh, a partner in VET uh, on sarcopenia in addition to uh, Werner and Nash. Uh, Nash is quite interesting because it's a large uh, market opportunity and also um, because uh, Nash uh, has been such an unmet needs, there's some very good guidelines and there's opportunity both with the European agency and the FDA uh, to have accelerated development pathways. So it's not an orphan drug status, but it allows us uh, to, um, to have uh, a faster uh, approval. Um, another question, uh, yes, uh, why the dog? I explain it's uh, mostly recycling. Uh, we will not develop uh, the dog indication ourselves. Uh, we already uh, discussed that with a few uh, veterinary uh, pharma companies. There's not that much, but uh, we discussed with uh, several companies who are interested and follow us. As uh, we will do our tox study and we will marginally add a few uh, additional endpoints in dogs and out license the program to a vet, and that will allow us also to. Uh, uh, get non-diluting uh, cash to uh, uh, support our uh, new developments. Um, the next milestone, the next question is about the next milestones. The next milestones are, uh, of course, uh, regulatory agency in Europe, uh, the 26, that will be followed by a pre pre IND meeting, we're working on it with the FDA. We'll skip, they said we're too advanced to have an interact meeting, so we'll go for a pre pre IND meeting. We have now 700 mice uh, going to for an in vivo confirmation uh, through different li University of Liverpool, um, University of Rochester. Uh, we have also uh, in France with uh, some CROs and one in Belgium. Uh, with the CROs and uh, those in vivo's uh, data with uh, mouse uh, with different model of uh, NASH is very important. The issue of NASH, it's a NASH is an evolving disease and the animal models are not perfect. So we need to test our drug in different uh, models and that's why we have in fact uh, those very large number of mice because we want to uh, present in the uh, uh, in the meetings with the FDA and the European Agency, the data at early stage, late stage, and uh, uh, at early fibrosis. Um, the entry in NASH, uh, where you enter the market, is very important. And by having multiple in vivo um, data with different models will, will allow us to best uh, choose the entry door to enter NASH. Uh, I will also say that uh, it's it's a good problem to have to use different models. It's because we are not only focusing on inflammation. We are not only focusing on uh, fibrosis. We are not only focusing on metabolic or on uh, steatosis or in preventing hepatocarcinoma. We can cover the entire evolution spectrum of the of the disease. Uh, it seems that's the last question. So all I have to do is uh, to thank you very much for your attention and uh, hope to uh, be able to uh, share with you our progress in the next uh, few months or years. Thank you.